We're a Boston-based architecture design firm. Um, our work ranges um, from a number of different project types. We have projects with the Department of Defense and the military looking at the future of bases and how they evolve, um, how we begin to consolidate bases and think about how um, military families use those spaces differently. Um, we do a number of schools, educational projects, um, a lot of retail spaces, a lot of mixed use projects. And for us, um, we're most interested in the technologies that are transforming our buildings and cities. And so really for architecture, um, there are four um, plus five climate change um, being the driving trends that are shaping our buildings, our spaces, and our cities. And you know, anywhere from mass customization, which is how our buildings are built and fabricated, and this notion of making things more personalized, to mobility, autonomous vehicles, shared autonomous vehicles, um, and how that affects the planning and how we um, shape our cities and predict where people are going to move in the cities to mixed reality, virtual reality, augmented reality, and then the Internet of Things, which will be critical in terms of how our um, measuring how our buildings perform, how people use our buildings, and how we get data from our buildings. Um, one thing, um, we've selected a series of slides that look at the future of augmented reality as it might relate to architecture. Um, there's a number of things that we're doing now um, with virtual reality and augmented reality. Um, both from kind of the basic um, level of getting the communities, getting cities um, into our spaces and buildings before they're designed. We just finished a build of, um, this is the first slide. This is a building in downtown Boston, 1920s building. Um, Kachina and Kat built um, in Unity. Basically an interactive um, experience that allows um, people, and for us it's the real estate agents, it's our clients, how you get them into buildings and how you can have them imagine um, different futures of buildings. And so phenomenal um, series of bank buildings, great history. We layered on um, a series of holographic um, kind of historic images that talked about the history of the building as you moved through the interior lobby space. And then um, as you basically interacted with the VR experience, you were able to switch out different interior experiences and understand the impacts of a bar in the lower level, a cafe in the lower level. So again, basic stuff. Um, but what we're most interested in is how does this impact the buildings that we're designing now that will be built in, say, 2020, 2025, and have that lifespan of from 20 to 30 years from now? Um, what might we do to our um, buildings if we knew that people were going to walk through them using augmented reality? How would we design those differently? Um, this is an example of kind of research project that we've been doing on mobility and autonomous vehicles. Um, and it really started from, you know, we're architects, we're sick of building parking garages. Why should we put another parking garage in our city, let alone on the waterfront? Um, and so how might you imagine something like a garage um, or really any building in general having enough flexibility to transform um, its use over time? Um, we're really in this age of radical mixed use. Um, what you're building now um, needs to be able to be transformed into something else in the future. And so for us, augmented reality and what we do as architects in terms of shaping those spaces allows us to do that. Want to jump in? We're going to make this a conversation. <laughs> so. Oh, well, <laughs> so I feel like I might need to get to my slides for that, so I'll just advance forward. Um, and so part of this is also um, how do you look at buildings as um, kind of that collective experience and that social experience. And if you can imagine that our buildings all become screens, what would you project onto them? What would you imagine floating around them? And how would you begin to have and craft this larger collective experience? And so for us, this is scary that everybody out here, you're going to be basically painting the facades on our building. And how do we, um, as architects, get ahead of that? I think the term architecture was taken away a bit in the you know, the internet, the technological revolution. We trained hard for our degrees and we know how people experience space. <laughs> um, and so if you imagine um, kind of, you know, Boston Marathon, how might you reimagine that as a larger experience for the city of Boston? And then a lot of our um, residential multifamily projects, um, what is your experience of the city from inside your apartment, inside your condo? How do you begin to build a more collective experience within um, an apartment building. And so these are conversations we're having now with our clients. Um, you know, there's this whole kind of collapse of co-living, co-working, um, you know, without thinking about how work is changing, um, which then affects how you might 
drive kind of the telepresence differently. Um, you know, we're not thinking holistically about the lifespan of our building. And so, you know, one other thing, um, you know, I had three grandparents who have gone into assisted living and other facilities, and could you use augmented reality to basically lessen that stress of relocation, of the kind of transitional trauma that people experience when they move from their home into another environment, kind of late in their lifespan. And could we begin to imagine how augmented reality could lessen that stress? So you could begin to mix the environments um, from when you're living in your house to when you're moving somewhere else. Um, that would give you that comfort level. And so for us, it's that psychology behind um, the experiences and that user interface of those experiences that is critical to us. So as everybody in this room probably knows, tech is pretty integral in our lives and it has become part of our human profile. And with architecture, if, if you look at a building, if you understand why it was created, it is part of our profile. It, fits our needs for the time, it starts to talk about where we are as a culture and um, how we see design and how we want to present ourselves to our community. Um, so part of our research that we're doing at Arrow Street um, over the next couple of years is looking at how the Internet of Things, VR and AR are going to affect these spaces. Um, the start of our research is going to begin in the home unit and understanding how um, your personal profile is set up with uh, Internet of Things devices. And it's going to start to understand how you're operating in that space, what your needs are. Um, and then it's going to move into a larger understanding of maybe how you fit into your community. We do a lot of work with mixed use spaces, um, which usually provide a retail um, area at the ground level mixed with a restaurant experience and then you'll have living or hotel use above that. So the interesting thing that we wanted to study is if you have a profile, if you have a user profile, which I know everybody is kind of afraid of having their information out there um, and, and being used by some higher power, but um, if you have a private profile, that's going to start to drive how the retail at the ground level is going to work, how the educate or sorry, how the um, entertainment spaces and public spaces at the ground level are going to work. Um, and then if you start to think about having a more social environment in in your um, building and kind of understanding that other people do have access to how you've lived in your community and the kind of footprint that you're leaving in that community. Um, we can start to design spaces for community members, for personalization, um, and it starts to get into how we, how we kind of bring materials into these spaces. I guess like if, if you're thinking about retail, you're starting to think about how we see um, like a warehouse being served with this information. It's, it's very specific and unique to the community. Um, sorry, so in this slide we're just trying to, <laughs> it's a little out there, but we're just trying to understand um, how, how it would be if you are starting to wear these AR devices, starting to understand that you, you have these public and private profiles and if you do want to be in the public, maybe somebody starts to understand what it is your lifestyle is like. Maybe if they want to take a look at, at your jacket and see how much it costs, they can figure that out. And maybe some other people in your community have started to, um, to, to follow you or, or find your lifestyle interesting. So it's just really a big social experiment that we're going to try to figure out with AR and the Internet of Things. As well as the predictive notion, we were talking about this the other week. Um, you know, as a woman, you're moving down the street, you're trying to get to your car, although with AV, maybe it's coming to you, um, and you're getting to a street corner. Who is going to be on that street corner? I mean, all of our phones can basically predict when we get from our home into work and within basically a minute. And so what if you knew who was going to be at that street corner ahead of you? Would you change where you're moving? Um, how would that impact how you kind of move through the city? So obviously we all know there's a lot of data out there. That's probably part of the reason why a lot of us are here today. And what we task ourselves with at Arrow Street and as architects is how is that data going to start informing 
where you are in the public realm in an interior space and how do we create spaces for things to be projected onto or for layers of information to be shown on top of. Um, and these are just a couple of examples of uh, things we think we may design for. Um, the concept of mixed use spaces is not new. You can combine, or you, there's many examples today of spaces where offices cohabitate with grocery stores, cohabitate with research labs. Um, but the idea of being able to augment information over physical infrastructure unlocks a whole level of flexibility that will be required in physical spaces that we haven't even fully understood yet. Um, so typically, historically, architecture, as Kachina said, is a physical representation of what is important to a society at a particular moment in time. And with technology advancing in sort of quantum leaps and bounds, flexibility for us is something that we have to prioritize for so that AR can allow flexible use of many different types of spaces. Um, so the same space that could be a parking garage could also host Comic-Con um, and could also serve as an emergency facility for an inclement weather event. So this idea and this notion of prioritizing flexibility allows us to provide spaces for people that can be what they need regardless of what's going on in the world around them. The idea that we can integrate layers and layers of data, predictive analytics, and other things that many people here are more qualified to speak about than myself, lets our spaces be able to be whatever people need them to be at that point in time. So in this particular image, are you able to go to one location and find shelter, find medical support, find food resources, anything that you might need? Uh, so these are some of the questions that we are thinking about and considering as we design. Uh, and I don't think we're allowed to ask for questions, but if you're interested in this at all, please come find us. We're around for the rest of the day and we're really interested in having conversations about AR tech and how it is going to inform placemaking. So, thank you. Thank you.